All right, so in order to do a contour rendering, we grab our stuff, we assign a material. You can use um, mostly any one of these. Um, I'm just going to use a use background. And if we were to render, there'd be nothing there. Um, I know I need to switch this to mental ray, so I'm going to switch to mental ray. Um, I'm going to go to my attribute editor. There's a use background. I'm going to click on this back button. And that gets me here. And I'm just going to enable the contour rendering. Here we have the color. Here we have the alpha. Here we have the width. Uh, I'm going to go to my render settings. If I go to features. I go down to contours. And I enable the contour rendering. Okay, so I enable the contour rendering here. And on the shading group, I enable the contour rendering. Um, it's still not going to render, just so you can see. There we go. Um, I have to come in here and I have to go under property difference and I have to tell it what kind I want it to do. So around the silhouette, um, around all poly faces, and then under quality I have to turn off unified sampling. If this doesn't work with unified sampling, I have to set it to legacy sampling mode. So now you can see that I have a contour. And if I go back to my features, I can change the around all poly faces. Typically that's the one you want to have on. But now it's around all silhouette. Or I can say around all coplanar faces. Or I can say between different um, around render tessellation, which will give me triangles. Uh, front versus back. And I don't know what that's doing. All right. So typically you're going to want to do around all poly faces. That will give you um, the front stuff here. All right. So now we have that all set up. Um, so now we can adjust some of the settings. So under the attribute editor, I can take the width down, 0.25. And you can see it's kind of grainy. My um, quality settings are not turned up. So once I turn these up to 2, you'll see that that's going to get a little bit clearer. Under the features, there's also a sample right here. Okay, and here I can take and change this filter type to Gaussian and change my samples to 10. And this will create a much smoother wireframe on, on top of your object. And then it's simply just a matter of going through um, and setting up a batch render for you know this stuff here. Okay, or a still if that's all you're doing is stills. Um, now if you are doing 16-bit um, stuff under the quality under frame buffer, there is this RGBA 4x16, which is the default um, size. And the ifs are 16-bit, so they will come out 16-bit. Um, if you're ever not sure about that, you could always render these as an EXR, open EXR, because that goes up to 32-bit. And then you can deal with that inside of Photoshop or inside of uh, After Effects or wherever. Okay, but obviously you want to test your stuff, render one out, bring it into Photoshop or wherever you're going, and then make sure that it works. Now, if this didn't work out and you needed, you know, an animation of this, or you needed to see the front and back, what you can do is you can turn off all your stuff. So I turned off my grid under display, um, heads up display. I can turn off my poly count, my view axis, my camera names. I have Bifrost on, so under Bifrost, I can turn off that heads up display. Mom? I can hit Control Spacebar, and you can see how everything just kind of gets bigger. And I can obviously take a screenshot of this if I needed to. Um, under my show, or sorry, renderer, I can go to my viewport 2.0 option box. And I could turn some of the stuff on that's in here, like if I needed um, anti-aliasing, I could smooth the wireframe. and see it makes it look nicer. I could also do multi-sampling, which kind of makes it a little bit crisper. And if I need to change the color of this, I'm going to hit control space bar again. And I'll just grab two of these objects. And then I could just add those two objects to that, double click it, and then give it a different color. So now oops, I have these as two different colors. So I would hit um, on the school's computer, Alt Print Screen, open up Photoshop, make a new document, and paste it. Um, or obviously I could just um, oops, do other stuff if I, if I wanted. If I needed a movie, which I believe you said you didn't need a movie, but if I did need a movie, I can go to Window, Play Blast, tell it to do the time slider, um, tell it to do an image, whatever file type you want. Typically, you'd want to save it as a Maya if. Um, from Window, I'd say from Render Settings, that way it's the same size. Scale 1, 
save the file, you know, where's it going to go? It'll go into my default images, that's fine. And hit play. So there we go. So now I have a video or a still of this that's all rendered out that I could actually use uh, placed on top of something or whatever I need to. Okay. So that's how to render a contour, how to use the viewport. I guess I can show that too. View, um, select camera, attribute editor, and under the environment, I can change the color of the environment. Oops, sorry, not that way. Um, Alt B. There we go. And that will change the color of my environment. Okay. There's also a display. You don't change it too often. Window, settings, preferences, color, that's where it is. And then the 3D views, here's your background color. So you can actually just change it that way. Uh, window, settings, preferences, color settings. There it goes. And I can make it white, I can make it black. So I have to make sure it was on something besides the gradient, and then it'll um, allow me to do that. Okay? So there you go. So those should be the um, those three items. Um, as for the, I lost my thing. Uh, my control space bar is not working anymore to reset. So I just go to display, UI elements, uh, show all. There we go. All right. So there's all my stuff back. <clears throat> um, when you're rendering it, like I said, make sure your quality is set to four by sixteen. You're getting sixteen bit images. Um, and then that's it. Um, there, there is. It's already color. It's already in color. It's already in true color. Um, whatever. Um, you can go to Google. Obviously, true color. I sent you some links. Twenty-four uh, bit, and twenty-four bit is not like the same thing as like sixteen bit. Okay. This one, there's sixteen bits per channel. Here. 24 bit is 8 bits per channel. That's what that is. So 24 bit true color image is just a regular RGB image. Okay. That's all that means. A 16 bit is 4 by 16. There's four 16 bit channels. Uh, they may want that as a still image. Um, but as far as I know, there's no like 16 bit movie stuff. So if they do want that, then I would ask that tomorrow at setup. Uh, that would be your best bet. Alright, anything else? Let me know.